Coming up, an amazing aircraft with a split personality. Part plane, part helicopter. And I want to know why it doesn't fall out of the sky. Today at 8. There's something new in the air. This aircraft is what makes the Special Operations Wing so special. The Osprey, a powerful new war machine that's part plane, part helicopter, all techno muscle. I've been given high level clearance by Kirtland Special Operations Commander Colonel Todd Lovell to join a mock rescue mission. Here I am stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. The plan is that Colonel Todd Lovell is gonna swoop in in the Osprey and come pick me up. The Osprey is soaring towards me at more than 300 miles an hour, twice as fast as the quickest helicopter in the U.S. military fleet. And although it's part plane, it doesn't need a runway to touch down. From plane to chopper in the time it takes for me to finish this sentence. Now that's cool. First time I saw one flying, the thing that impressed me the most about it was the speed. It's this perfect combination of speed and flexibility that makes the Osprey so valuable for dangerous wartime missions. The primary mission of the airplane is to move combat equipped Marines from either the sea base or a forward operating base directly to the objective area. With twice the speed of a Black Hawk and five times the range, the Osprey will also be the ultimate rescue platform in the heat of battle. The medevac people will tell you about the thing called the golden hour, you know, the need to get a wounded Marine from the, the point where he's wounded to forward resuscitative care as rapidly as possible within, within that first hour. And, uh, you know, pretty easy to envision how an airplane that flies 250 knots is going to save a lot more lives than an airplane that flies 110 knots. Plus, the Osprey comes fitted with its own heat-seeking missile defense capability. Built into its exhaust system are infrared suppressors. They mix cool outside air with the hot engine exhaust, so the Osprey's trail goes cold before the heat seekers can lock on. But if enemy gunfire or mechanical failure does cripple an engine, the Osprey can still fly with just one working rotor. Another threat to pilots and crew comes from this. Blinding dust storms called brownouts that are kicked up by the rotors. Brownouts have caused most of the military chopper crashes in Iraq and Afghanistan. But the Osprey has infrared cameras feeding its cockpit display, so pilots can see through that blinding dust as if it wasn't there. It's taken more than 50 years for science to truly deliver the dream of a tilt-rotor aircraft. The first attempt, the Bell XV-3, took its maiden flight in 1955. But with a 450 horsepower engine, the XV-3 was underpowered and it only flew a few feet off the ground. By 1973, NASA made progress with the XV-15, which finally led to the V-22 program and the Osprey's 20-year gestation. Engineers had finally figured out a way of combining two types of aerodynamics, the fixed wing of a plane and the rotating wing of a helicopter. Here's the difference. A fixed wing gets its lift by moving forward through the air, creating lower pressure above the wing and higher pressure below. It pushes up and that's lift. In a chopper, the blades are really just a circular wing, creating the same lift effect. But because the wing is spinning, the aircraft doesn't have to move forward. It can hover. Now, the Osprey has both 38-foot rotors and an 84-foot wing. The trick is to switch from one mode to the other without falling out of the sky. The way you do it is gradually tilting the propellers from vertical to horizontal. 
That way, as the lift is lost from the blades, it's taken up by the wing. The blades start acting like propellers, pulling the aircraft forward and creating lift along the wing. It's not a choice of either being in a hover or being in airplane mode. The airplane can fly in anywhere in between. So anywhere in between, there's a certain percentage of the lift that's being borne by the rotor system and a certain percentage being borne by the wing. The Osprey's tilt engines are massive Allison Rolls-Royce turbo shaft models, each cranking out 6,150 horsepower. Some of this power is transferred to a mid-wing gearbox that drives the tilting mechanism. The engines are also interconnected, so if one goes down, the other can drive both sets of rotors. Each engine gearbox combo is called a nacelle. And when the Osprey morphs from helicopter to plane, the nacelles move through 90 degrees in as little as 15 seconds with the roll of a pilot's thumb. I will say that um, the whole transition from, from helicopter mode to airplane mode is, uh, is virtually carefree. The Osprey is the most wired military chopper ever built with no mechanical connections between controls and machinery. It's fly-by-wire with a computer system interpreting every pilot move. This keeps every maneuver within safe physical limits. So, what does it really take to fly one of these babies? After the break, I'm gonna find out. Wish me a happy landing. When I saw the military's new tilt rotor V-22 Osprey in action, I did what any techno freak would do. I begged to fly it. Well, the top Pentagon brass said yes and no. They didn't exactly trust me with one of these $90 million war machines. But they did give me rare access to this training simulator at Kirtland Air Force Base. Hey, Steve, this is our uh, CB-22 flight simulator. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks brand new, too. Yeah, it's awesome. We use it to train our uh, pilots and our flight engineers before they step in our aircraft. Looks pretty real out there, actually, doesn't it? Yeah, we've got a great database, and uh, you'll get to see all kinds of different scenarios out there. My first order, get us off the ground. The nacelles are pointed straight up, so adding thrust will lift us like a helicopter. And why don't you try to pick it up into about a 30-foot hover? It's starting to already move forward. Yeah, that's because you had your nacelles at 83. Where do I Take want Take those nacelles back to uh, more of a hover nacelle, about 87 nacelle. Seems I jumped the gun on the forward tilt angle. It's amazing, just a few degrees of adjustment and the Osprey starts turning into a plane. And it's so easy, the fly-by-wire computer system gives even a newbie like me a steady hand. You see the prop rotors on I sure side? do. You can see them coming down in the sim. Yep. And now we're flying. Okay. And you're in airplane mode now. <laughs> you can see, uh, you know, that was pretty timid as well, but we're already up at, uh, 240 knots ground speed. You're kidding! At this speed, the wings are doing all the lifting, and those 6,000 horsepower engines are dedicated to pulling me through the air. This is where the Osprey trumps any chopper. Most helicopters top out at around 150 miles an hour. In fact, it's impossible for one to fly faster than 250. That's because the rotor tips would need to travel faster than the speed of sound and no rotor blade has ever been invented that could withstand that speed. But I gotta keep my mind on the job here. This is the tricky part. Ask any pilot. Landing. Okay, we've got three down. Or we've got our gear down, three green. And we're ready for landing. We've got our nacelles where they need to be. And now you just need to set her down. You got your road picked out. You can raise that nose if you need to. Okay, I've pulled the nacelles back to within a few degrees of vertical, like a regular chopper. Now I'll ease off the throttle and gently kiss the ground. I hope. And there, we're on the ground, we're down. Power off, on the brakes. And great job. Did it all by yourself. Thank you. All right, what's next? This bird is ready for action, and it's already deployed in the U.S. Marine Medium Tilt Rotor Squadron 263. They call themselves the Thunder Chickens. It's not an experimental aircraft anymore. In fact, this is the first go-to-war airplane here. 